This Japanese beast is the most powerful and most expensive Mazda ever sold in Australia. I kind of wish we were talking about a sports car here, maybe a reborn rotary, but this is a seven seat family SUV. The CX-90 is aggressively pushing the brand up market, which begs the question, would you pay European dollars for a Mazda? Have your say in the comments below. Don't forget to like the vid and subscribe to our channel for all the latest new car launches. The new Mazda CX-90 will replace the CX-9 as the brand's flagship SUV by the end of 2023. It starts at around $74,000 and tops out at more than 100 k by the time you get it on road, a price more commonly associated with luxury European SUVs. It still offers a lot of metal for your money, however, as the CX-90 is similar in size to the likes of the BMW X7 and Mercedes-Benz GLS, which both start at around $170,000. While most car makers are downsizing their engines or switching to EV, Mazda is running in the opposite direction. It's developed two all new inline six cylinder engines that are bigger than before and more powerful. You can get a petrol or a diesel, and there's also a plug-in hybrid version coming in late 2024. And this engine is one of the reasons you're paying top dollar for the CX-90. It's hugely complex, it's the most expensive part of development for the entire vehicle. And it also comes with a 48 volt mild hybrid system, which Mazda says gives it very, very good fuel consumption. We'll find out soon enough. Well, this is very nice. Is it $100,000 nice? I reckon it might be, it's pretty impressive. Granted, this model is equipped with the Takumi package upgrade, $6,500. So that's taking it well above 100K, but it adds this gorgeous white maple timber finish on the doors, on the center console. You've got this Kakanui stitching on the dash. I don't really know what that means, but it looks fantastic. You've got some really nice sort of hand finished touches and white Nappa leather seats. The leather is gorgeous. They're power operated seats. They're comfortable, they're big and uh, heated and cooled. And yes, it is very fancy, but there are some little touches here and there, such as the stalks, some of the plastics, they do feel a little bit cheap if you're looking for them. This top spec model comes with two 12.3 inch digital screens and they both look fantastic. They're nicely integrated, they're high resolution. However, I do feel like they're a little bit underutilized. The digital dash, for instance, only has two different themes and not a lot of trip computer options. I feel like you could have had a lot more customizability here. And also the screen here, most functions are controlled via this rotary dial in the native mode, you do finally get touchscreen, but only when you use wireless Apple CarPlay or wireless Android Auto. Plug it in with wired, still not touchscreen. You've got to use the dial. And it's, look, it's a step forward because previously most master screens haven't been touchscreen, but it's still a bit frustrating. I think everything could have been touchscreen if you want it, and then you decide which one you want to use. So in the back seats, the captain's chairs, this is obviously part of that expensive option pack to Kumi or SP, but it is pretty fancy back here. Headroom is not bad, legroom is pretty good. I can get my feet under the seats. And yeah, it definitely feels more like a Lexus than a Nissan back here. But look, there are still a few areas where you go, mm, is it a hundred grand's worth? Some of the plastics here and down here, not amazing. Having that third seating row back there is super handy. This is a very versatile SUV, very big too. And there's quite a bit of room back here. Good headroom, leg room and foot room, not amazing, but adults will be able to sit back here in relative comfort for a reasonable amount of time. It's not as bad as a lot of seven seaters. All right, let's check out the boot. Power operated naturally, and this is a big vehicle. And you've actually got a reasonable amount of space here with all three seat rows up. You could fit plenty of shopping in here, some small suitcases, but fold down the third row and 
Bazinga, you've got loads more space. You can even fold down the two captain's chairs flat and there is a lot of space in this vehicle. Enough gas bagging. I wanna see how she boogies. Cue the driving music. First impressions rolling out of the car park. Well, it does have a luxury feel. It's big, it's heavy, it's, it's got substance and a bit of gravitas. The CX-90 is gonna spend most of its time in the suburbs around town at slower speeds, doing, well, relatively boring stuff. And what's it like in these scenarios? Well, I can't really tell you because this launch is pretty much exclusively on open roads out in the country. But look, it does feel pretty good over most bumps and lumps. There is a sense that Mazda has really focused on the dynamics of this vehicle to make it handle well, rather than the comfort levels. I think ride quality might surprise a few people with its firmness. Mazda's engineers told us the desire was for a vehicle that handles well, and they didn't want to copy the Germans or other Japanese vehicles or the Koreans or anything like that. They wanted to do their own thing. And in a way, I kind of respect that. But part of me wonders why they didn't offer adaptive dampers. This car, for this price, probably should have adjustable suspension. And the fact that it doesn't is almost sacrilegious. If you're looking for an engaging and fun to drive SUV, this is it. It's not floppy, it's not sloppy. It tracks through corners really keenly and it's quite satisfying. I'm really surprised. It generates heaps of grip. And yes, there is a little bit of body roll on tighter corners and when you really push it, but this thing weighs 2.2 tons and it's on passive suspension. And I think they've done a very good job in a dynamic sense. The suspension isn't quite as well-rounded as I would have hoped, but overall, I'm quite impressed with this. Perhaps the most impressive element of the new CX-90 are these six-cylinder engines. I'm driving the petrol one at the moment and it is just delightful. It's smooth, it's refined. I mean, I don't think it's quite at the level of BMW's inline sixes, but this is a huge deal. This is their first inline six. They're obviously gonna refine it and improve it over time, but as it stands right now, it's damn good. It's responsive, it's a little bit evocative. There's a pretty reasonable tone to it when you stick the boot in. And yeah, it delivers impressive punch across the rev range, although it does feel a little bit sluggish from standstill. Mazda says 6.9 seconds. I think it's more like 7.58 seconds myself, but there's no denying it's got pace. And the diesel, well, I think I actually prefer that engine. It's got a little bit more voice. It's a little bit louder. And I think that smoother power delivery kind of suits the car's luxury vibe a little bit better. And yeah, you, there's more torque down low and in the mid range. With the petrol, you do have to rev it a little bit more to extract maximum performance. It's no secret Mazda has embarked on a luxury crusade, and the CX-90 embodies this ethos more than any other model to date. But it also feels like it's a solution looking for a problem. I mean, are BMW X7 buyers gonna downgrade? Are Kia Sorento buyers going to upgrade? I personally don't see it happening. But look, at the end of the day, this is a very slick product, a one that deserves to get attention, and it certainly will. Hope you enjoyed this launch video and stay tuned for a more in-depth review once we've spent more time with the vehicle. Thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the car sales channel. And what do you reckon? Is this car worth $100,000 plus? And also, should Mazda resurrect a rotary sports car, maybe an RX-9? I say yes. What do you reckon? Leave a comment below.